So, I heard you wanna play me Sword Fighter. Then welcome to my guide. Let's begin. Me Sword Fighters are fairly average overall, though slightly on the slower, heavier side. You won't be able to overwhelm your opponents with some crazy combo game like Pichu, nor will you kill crazy early like Gun and Dork. On the flip side, they are jacks of all trades, their only glaring weakness being slightly slow moves. In fact, they have access to tools other sword fighters don't, such as projectiles or Mario's cape. Their objective thus becomes to keep the opponent at bay, pressuring them into picking certain options, then punishing them as they are not fast enough to contest many characters. This makes me sword fighter very reliant on your mastery of the game's fundamentals. Let's now review their moveset. One important detail before we start, every time I mention fill percent, this was tested on Corrin, the middleweight, with fresh moves, without the eye, and near the ledge. And of course, combo percent are character dependent. At frame 6, Jab is on the slower side. It launches at a low angle, which is good for setting up an edge guard, but doesn't serve any other purpose. Overall though, Missile Fighter has better options, so the jab should see little use. Dash attack comes rather fast with good reach. Unfortunately, it's not safe in shield, nor does it lead into combat. However, it does its job of whiff punishing quite well, and sports much appreciated killing power to boot. Forward tilt's usefulness is rather limited. It's not safe on shield, nor can it start or extend combos. It's mainly used to force tech situations at mid percent and to launch at a low angle for an edge guard. Down tilt is a great move. It is fast, has decent range, and is safe on shield, which lets you pressure shield to force a reaction for you to punish. Thanks to its low knockback, landing it will allow you to combo until high percent. Down tilt is the single fastest tool at your disposal so you will have to master it to safely put your opponent at a disadvantage, rack of damage and exert pressure. Up tilt is another good move. It hits all around the me with a quick swing, which combos once into itself at around 35-50%. to 50%. Before 35%, the hit stun won't be long enough. After 50%, the opponent will be too high up. At higher percent, you will want to use an aerial. Your me crouches before hitting, lowering the hurt box, but while it is a good anti-air move, its reach is a bit short and won't hit your opponent on some platforms. Forward Smash kills the earliest with decent reach. It has three hitboxes, the further you hit the harder, though not by much. Because of its end lag, it's best used as a combo finisher, a hard punish, or if you can fit into the read. Down Smash is their fastest smash. Like Jab, it launches at a low angle, perfect for sending off stage. Thanks to its short delay between the front and back hits, it's perfect for ledge trapping and catching rolls. The front hit can also catch two frames. Up smash hits three times, but the first hitbox only hits right in front near the ground. As such, this makes it a good out of shield option only if the opponent is both close to you and in front of you. Their grab game is pretty generic. Forward throw and back throw to throw off stage, down throw to combo until high percent, and up throw is worth it. The interesting part is that down throw also leads into kill confirms if the opponent doesn't die away at high percent, making it your go-to throw until after 100%. After this, simply send them off stage to edge guard them. Neutral air is both tricky to use and deceptive because of its animation. It is great at a few things, such as starting combos or forcing techs. It's also one of your few out of shield options. But since Neutral is active for a long time and launches at a low angle, it's notably good at edge guarding, gimping quite a few recoveries. Forward air is a great spacing tool. Even buffered, you will have an active disjointing hitbox before landing. At low percent, it won't launch very far, allowing for combos. At any percent, you can land cancel it for combo potential. At higher percent, you may simply want to smash away for the kill. Back air is a bit slow, yet stays active for a very short time. It also hits very high, so it doesn't work well as an out-of-shield option. Fast falling to hit small or crouching characters can also be quite difficult. However, it's safe on shield if you hit right before landing and starts combos until mid percent, where it forces techs instead. Because of that, it's best used for cross-ups, spacing, pressuring shields, as well as a kill move. 
Down air is a multi-hit aerial, making it tricky to defend a fire against despite its initial delay. However, you will be vulnerable to quick out of shield options and whiff punishes. On the plus side, it can poke through shields after you've weakened them, and your opponent will soon be conditioned to hold shield or try and punish your down airs. It's especially nice for ledge trapping since it can drag down your opening with you, as well as gimping because of how long it stays active. Up there's Sweet Spot is on the first hitbox and is one of your best killing moves. Thanks to its range, it will beat most down airs, making it excellent for juggling. It's also a good follow up to up tilt and down throw, leading into a kill at high percent. Ending with a Sour Spot is a high risk, high reward, since it will always let you combo or even kill. It's easier to do when crossing up with it. Sadly, this won't work on small or some crouching characters. With its set knockback and big hitbox, everyone has learned to fear the potential of this infamous tornado. Being intangible, this means unlike most projectiles, this won't be cancelled out by another attack. Link's Hellion shield will block it though. The earlier it connects, the higher the damage but the less time you have to shield our combo. In the air, it will start falling, scooping up opponents at the ledge and even two-framing with ease. Due to this, it will be your best ally at the ledge. It can also be used sparingly in the neutral to catch short hops or landings, netting you a kill or good damage, but be mindful as it does leave you quite vulnerable. The shurikens of light are spammable projectiles with quite a long range. The later they hit, the harder. They can be used to rack up some damage in the neutral thanks to how little you have to commit when throwing one, or like Falco's laser when edge guarding. Last but certainly not least, they're very useful for jab resets, but more on this later. Blurring Blade is a chargeable multi-hit move which, at full strength, is the single best killing move in the entire Mi Sword Fighter's arsenal. You can attack behind you instead with no penalties whatsoever. It takes 50 frames to fully charge, dealing a hefty amount of shield damage. If used in the air, it will stall you for the duration, possibly poking through shields. Thanks to that, it's quite decent at catching the opponent in the air and not only punishing rolls but also air dodges by reversing it mid-charge. Edge guarding with it is another option. Since the move lasts quite a while, the timing to catch the opponent mid-recovery is that much more lenient. It's also a great mix-up to the usual ledge trapping and landing options, its rapidly rising power possibly prompting panic reactions. Airborne Assault travels a good horizontal distance Stalling your fall while doing so. It can be used as many times as you want in the air, only sending you to free fall if you do not act out of it. It also sports decent kill power, which is not bad for punishing balls and tech chasing. Now for the downside. It will always travel the exact same distance at the exact same unremarkable speed, making you a prime target for a smash with punish or a spike. This also means it will get shielded a lot, which leaves you open for a punish. All in all, much too unsafe even for recovering to see proper use. Gale Star behaves like Ike's Quick Draw for the most part, but they do have their dissimilarities. And now that this is the worst of the side specials by far. For starters, it doesn't travel as far. Unlike Ike's Quick Draw, you cannot auto-cancel it. Worse yet, hitting an opponent that's sitting at the ledge or jumping at you will prevent you from grabbing the ledge and send you to free fall. That's right, that's how bad it is. On the plus side, it kills nicely when fully charged, coming out of charge frame 2. But that's about it. Unless it gets buffed, do yourself a favor, don't bother with this one. The current obvious choice for your side special, check arms have a weak and strong throw, both of which can be angled up or down. The strong throw is good during neutral and at pressuring the opponent when they recover or you recover. If used properly, it can gimp with ease. And I do mean with ease. This move alone makes me Sword Fighter an edge guarding beast. In the neutral, use it as an anti-air for zoning and catching landings for some easy percent. The weak throw is much trickier to use, but just as rewarding. It can be used in the air to dissuade or catch jumps as a ledge drop, a whiff punish or an occasional mix-up. At high percent, this usually guarantees a kill. You can also B-reverse it to catch an opponent by surprise. It's also pretty useful for punishing rolls, giving you ample time to prepare your combo and rack up the damage. Blade Counter will send opponents flying above Mi Sword Fighter, playing straight into the character's strengths. Until mid to high percent, this will actually start combos. Unfortunately, it doesn't reach much below you. The Dimensions tied for the second strongest counter in the game, netting good damage and sometimes early kills when reading strong attacks? Lovely stuff. 
Reversal Slash is one of only three moves in the game able to reflect characters. The visual cue is when the Mii extends their hand forward. Like Mario's Cape, it will stall you in the air, which you can use to delay your fall or time your edge guard, for example. All in all, use it like Mario's Cape, reflecting projectiles, cheesy games, etc. Don't forget it can also scoop up people at the ledge. As a down special, it's trickier to reverse, but it makes up for it by being the second strongest reflector in the game. Power Thrust has three hitboxes. The later you hit, the lesser the damage as well as the more vertically it launches. It won't go through shields and will stop at ledges. It's overall nice for tech chasing, catching landings, and is especially deadly against double jumping back into the stage. As for the air version, while a viable out of shield option after a grounded footstool, it takes a good amount of practice to master, but it will become a kill confirm at high percent. Otherwise, its sole use is falling faster. Stone Scabbard has the best vertical recovery. Something few people know is that it has early invulnerability frames as well, broadening its usefulness. As an out-of-shield option, it will beat everything that is slower than 4 frames, including all grabs. The move also sports nice launching power. It does have quite the end lag though, so do not abuse it. The falling hitbox is the only spike me Sword Fighter has with down it. However, its knockback is set, and you will always die first if you suicide. This also means the landing hitbox will never connect if you hit too high up above the ground. One last thing, you will not grab the ledge unless you're low enough, which may be good for the occasional mix-up. Skyward Slash Dash is the best recovery tool me Sword Fighters have, since it can be angled in any direction. It also deals a hefty amount of damage if all hits connect, and always sends the open flying with the same angle in the direction you're facing regardless of how it's angled. This can be used to your advantage during edge guarding phases. The move is a surprisingly not bad mix-up against edge trapping, racking up damage in the process. Use it too much, however, and they will punish you, so remember to mix it up. You can also drag suicide someone to the board. While not as good at recovering as Link's spin attack, Hero Spin sports higher killing power. It's one of your strongest kill moves and a quick out of shield option. The air version can whiff very easily if you don't drift correctly. To make sure this doesn't happen, move your stick to the other side for the last two hitboxes. If you dragged in your opening from behind you, instantly move your stick to the other side to prevent whiffing. You can catch opening strength to edge guard or ledge trap you, but this is punishable if you miss. Also, it's the worst in terms of recovery, so make sure you pressure with projectiles to recover safely. Most of your combos will be quite short, as it's not me Soul Fighter's forte. Limited mobility and poor frame data will prevent you from racking up good damage. I won't show all of them, only some to give you an idea. You do have a few longer ones. Although harder to pull off and with tight windows of execution, they are consistent at the right percent which depends on the character. Your grab game in particular will force some respect, as it can lead to juggling with your stronger pairs or a kill confirm. Also, down throw links into any aerial early on. Your ground combo starters are down tilt and up tilt. At lower mid percent, up tilt will net you some decent damage via some juggling. Quick characters will try to combo break you, so you can simply shield grab them. Overall, while not your be all end all, the ground combo game is an important part of your kit that you should not neglect. Once mastered, you will be able to send your opponents to mid percent almost any time you hit either of those tilts, possibly setting them up for an edge guard. The rest of your combos will start with a landing area. As Mi Sword Fighter, your aerials aren't completely safe on shield, so it's crucial to learn how to space them properly while fishing for combos. But once you have, the landing forward air will have become a great combo starter as well as kill confirm. Aside from this, you have access to potent strings if you read correctly, and this is probably where Mi Sword Fighters can evolve the most. While situational, you have a few options to initiate tech situations, including with your best landing options, which is always a nice bonus. You can jab reset with jab 1 and 2, and even extend with chakram for a bit of extra damage. However, jab 1 is too slow for you to shield afterwards if they tech. On top of this, it can whiff on some characters such as Corin, and your opponent will oftentimes be too far. Your aerials will require you to land moving toward the opponent, so it's risky to attempt it. Enter the Shuriken of Light, which can reset all characters, has more damage and can even work from afar. Just throw a Shuriken, Foxtrot, Shuriken, 
close their distance and then attack. Even if they attack, it's safe to attempt so there's no harm in trying. It can however bring your opponent out of jab reset if a slope or a ledge is involved. In that situation, only throw one shuriken before attacking to keep them on the ground. The neutral game is one of the Sword Fighter's best assets. With their disjointed hitboxes and projectiles, it can be tricky and dangerous to approach. Thanks to having projectiles of their own, as well as a cape, zoners aren't that much of a problem. In fact, me sword fighters are decent zoners themselves. Still, no matter how good their projectiles, they do leave you vulnerable. So really be careful when using it in the neutral. But when used properly, your chakrams and tornadoes will let you combo your opponent for good damage. Air dodges will be punished, yet your opponent will be tempted to dodge because of your juggling potential. Up air deals a good chunk of damage, and its sour spot stays at tear for a bit with a good deal of hit stun. You'll have no choice but to dodge or double jump because of its great priority, which is why you will want your opponent to be above you. On top of all that, it sports a stupid amount of shield damage, quickly pressuring opponents on platforms. And let's not forget its high kill power nor your kill setups leading into it. In fact, constantly reminding your opponent of your kill potential and the many creative ways you can make good on it is what will enable you to impose your rhythm on them. Because of your projectiles, you will be hard to approach. Because all the tools at your disposal punish different reactions with a different rhythm, it's also hard for them to know what defensive options they should go for. Being able to easily adapt your rhythm truly is one of your biggest assets. The timing for your moves can vary greatly and you even have long range options. Still, always keep in mind that you should respect your character's limits. Me sword fighters cannot contest when they're close and personal, so don't be afraid to reset neutral and wait for the opportunity you need. This is where me sword fighters shine. They can spike or gimp with stones covered and down air, though neither of which are amazingly good at it. However, your projectiles are more than a force to be reckoned with. They almost all are a dodge or die situation. Once you've mastered the timing of the chakram in its angles, you will be able to snipe and gimp the other player with absurd ease. Snipe if they try to recover high, down air if they try to recover low. With your chakrams, you can edge guard while staying safe on the stage timing everything you need right, and if you ever need to, jumping off. Because of this, you will force them to avoid it, either with a dodge or a double jump, both of which can then be punished for the stop. Even if they manage to make it to the ledge, your tornado is among the best ledge trapping tools in the game. It will force your opponent to input a ledge option to avoid the tornado all of which can be punished. And since your tornado is intangible, all they can do is jump above it or dodge it, which you can easily force with a well-aimed chakram. Heck, even another tornado can bait it. Down air is also quite good for punishing every ledge option except roll, or you can jump back to the stage afterwards with an aerial. Coupled with tornadoes or chakrams, manipulating the rhythm of your ledge trap is pretty easy. And then you have the Mario Cave Gimps. All in all, this gives me Sword Fighter a very oppressive edge guard and ledge trap with many options. This will allow you to bait the other player or even force them into using certain recovery options. And with this, we have covered all the main points. I hope this guide was useful to you. It took a while to make, but hey, if you'd be interested in guides for other, more exotic characters, do give the video a like and subscribe. If the demand is high enough, I will do my best to answer the call. And if you have questions or would like videos covering other subjects, let me know in the comments. Now that this is out of the way, have a beautiful day.